Hey everyone, welcome to this video on genetically modified organisms in agriculture. And today we will have a look at the fears some people have about genetic modifications uh, and to introduce you to the benefits of novel techniques in plant breeding compared to conventional and classical methods. We all want to have a healthy diet, including vegetables and cereals. One solution science offers as the demand for food is rising is the use of genetic engineering to, for example, increase yield or to make plants more resistant to environmental factors such as drought, for instance. However, about 57% of Americans and 48% of Europeans think that genetically engineered food is generally unsafe to eat. Several organizations claim GMOs are unhealthy and people should pursue natural diets. But what exactly is natural? Let's take a look at these natural foods. This is how bananas looked like before the domestication. They look similar from the outside but contain many inedible hard seeds on the inside. This is how natural corn looked like, only having a few kernels per cob. And who wants to eat this little natural peach that tastes a bit like a lentil? So we can see that many natural plants we eat have already been changed by our selection since we started agriculture thousands of years ago. And mutations in plants are an ordinary phenomenon. Yet another criticism is that mutations can have unforeseen effects and are thus dangerous. So let's compare three different methods for how we change our plants. In this picture you can see corn with different mutations. The crosses symbolize undesired mutations and the green takes beneficial mutations. So which one do you prefer to eat? Do you have an answer yet? Keep it in mind. First let's take a look on how traditional breeding works. Plants have been cultivated for thousands of years. Early farmers already selected plants for further cultivation that displayed beneficial traits. For instance, one plant had a shorter growing time or its fruits had a larger part of edible flesh. These traits are actually just the result of a mutated genotype. So that people, in essence, have always selected plants for beneficial genes. This technique of plant breeding is still employed nowadays. However, its major drawbacks are that it takes many generations and consequently years and decades to achieve the desired properties of phenotype. So back to our picture. Which one do you think is traditional breeding? Since the mutations happen by chance over a very long time frame, we have countless mutations in our foods that are undesired and we don't know the risk of them. But still, this natural way is thought as beneficial somehow by opponents of GMOs, even though most mutations are not planned at all. The main downside of traditional breeding is the long time it takes. To counter this disadvantage, plant breeders find ways to speed up the process. So let's take a look at current techniques in conventional agriculture. A technique commonly applied is induced mutagenesis. Seeds are exposed to chemicals or gamma radiation to create mutations. This way, plant breeders hope to obtain plants with a variety of phenotypes, of which they can choose the ones that are most beneficial or desired to them. Basically, breeders generate plants with many random mutations, hoping for the best. This technique has been used for decades, and the resulting plants are a normal part of our everyday diet without getting much attention. So this brings us back to the initial picture. How safe do you think this technique is? Well, as mutagenesis is basically traditional breeding, just at a much faster rate. So it has the same amount of unwanted mutations. Opposing the randomness of mutagenesis, new methods are available to create specific desired mutations, genotypes and uh, resulting plants with favorable properties. Novel genetic engineering methods such as CRISPR-Cas9, which we talked about in a previous video, target individual genes to be altered, replaced or removed. Also beneficial genes from uh, different species can be introduced as transgenes at a specific place in the genome. It is a kind of paradox that the use of these precise methods are substantially restricted in Europe due to uncertainty risks, while the creation of random changes to plant genomes by mutagenesis are generally allowed. In fact, random mutations that occur conventionally at bred plants are indistinguishable from genome-edited plants. Therefore, it is hard to control something that cannot be detected or verified. The evaluation of more than 1,700 studies and uh, 400 EU-funded independent studies on the safety of GMO foods did not find any increased health risk associated with GMOs compared to conventional foods. Thus, the question remains, why is there such a bias against GMO food? Thank you so much for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media and uh, stay tuned for more GMO crop videos on golden rice and uh, high efficiency crops.